All right, so recently I made a video about using query function and basically building an array from different columns so that when you add or delete columns from your data, it still works and it doesn't fall apart. Now, in this video, I'm gonna take that concept to a new level by basically doing something like this. So let me just show you what I'm trying to accomplish and then I guess we'll get to actually creating that. So let's just do something like this. So I want to be able to do this. If I just do a regular function here, I'm gonna go ahead and select my data from here. I'm gonna drop the end reference to go all the way down, including the headers in here. So that's gonna be my data. So if I do now basically select A, C, and G, where G is greater than 8,000, something like this. And then I can do one row as the header row. So that's gonna just give me this data, basically from that data set. Now, if we just convert this to an array using curly brackets, then we can change A to this, C to column three and G to column eight. And that should produce the same results. But maybe it's not eight, maybe it's seven. So let's just try that. Okay, so the problem with this again is that if I add a column in my data or a few columns in my data or whatever, this is just not gonna work anymore because column order is no longer gonna be the same, so this is gonna fail. So what I'm trying to do here, I want to go in here and instead of doing this, I want to create my own function here. So I want to do my select, do a comma and refer to the range of headers from my data. So I'm gonna go back to this data and refer to this first row of headers, see, data from A1 through G1, that's my headers range. And then instead of doing this column one, column two, column three, I wanna be able to just basically refer to column names. So I want to say sales, date, region, etc. Basically that should be something like this, right? So I would refer to this column name, this column name, and this column name. Now to avoid any potential problems with some words that might be keywords in our syntax, I'm gonna put column names in square brackets like this. So basically our convention is gonna be, we're gonna put the name of the column in square brackets like this and that's it. Now this is not working as you can see and we get this error name because there's no function called my select. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna create this function. So to do that, I'm gonna go to tools and open the script editor. Give this a name. And the function we're trying to create is this function called my select right here. And that function is gonna accept two arguments. It's gonna accept this string and it's gonna accept this range of data as a second argument. So I'm gonna go to this and create that function my select and it's gonna accept the SQL string and it's going to accept headers range like this. Now we need to make sure that we make this work by basically taking whatever's passed to us using this. So I'm just gonna copy this example over here. 
So that would be an example string. Basically, we need to just search through this and replace all of these columns with the appropriate column from this data. Now to do that, we're gonna use regular expression. To show you how this is gonna work, if I just copy this and let's just create a separate test function here. So assuming this is gonna be our text, let's actually call this text like this. So if we take that text and on this text, there is gonna be a function called match all. And what this is gonna do, it's basically gonna allow us to basically use regular expression in this match function to find a particular pattern in our text. So for example, I'm going to do a regular expression here and I want that to be brackets and in between these brackets, I want basically some of this text. And for that, I'm gonna do a period star and a question mark. I'm not gonna explain what this regular expression means. I have videos covering regular expressions. It's kind of a long and complicated topic. The main thing here is that this is gonna grab all the text that's between those brackets. Now, because brackets in regular expression also have a special meaning, we need to escape them by adding this escape character right in front of it, like this. And then we're gonna do a flag global on this, G. And let's just try to put this in a variable to see what we get, right? So I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna console log those results. So I'm gonna open this and run this function. And let's just take a look. As you can see, we got an object. Unfortunately, this doesn't actually show us what the results are in this log. Let's see if it does a better job with a logger log. Well, not exactly. So I guess what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our browser. So I'm gonna open the inspector to explain you this. And here I'm just gonna basically take this, copy and paste it, and then I'm gonna just open this results to show you what's going on there. Now, if you look here, the results I'm getting here is an object, which is basically a regular expression string iterator. And to be able to get to what's in it, we should be able to use this array, do we call it deconstruction or whatever this is called? And it should basically convert that to an array. And if you look here, I got an array of four things here. If I open this now, you should be able to see how I got this matches, which is the date, the sales rep, sales and sales. Basically anything that's in square brackets, I was able to get as a match. Now let's try to actually do the same thing here. So I'm gonna take this results and I'm gonna put that in brackets and do this and we'll save this in a new variable. And now let's try to console log this. Let's see if it does a better job console logging this one. I have a bad feeling about it, but who knows? Well, that's a lot better. So as you can see, we get an array and basically in this array, we get the first match, then we get the second match, the third match and so on. So for example, if I just take the first thing in this array, which is zero. If I just rerun this and we take a look, see that gives us the first match. And basically it consists of this, which is basically 
whatever the actual text is. And then it gives us the index and the index is the position where it was able to find this text. So in this particular text, it was able to find that in this position number seven. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's where this date starts. And then it also gives us the groups, which we're not using in this case. So we can ignore that. What we need to do, we need to get to whatever the match is, which is this thing in brackets, and we need to get the position, those two things out of this element. So what we're going to do, create a variable, I'm going to call it current match, and I'm just going to take that first element, which is basically just the first match, which is going to be the date, and if I do one here, it's going to get to sales rep. And here in this current match, we're going to basically do a couple of things. The first thing here is going to be, well, if I do zero in this, so let's just console log this so you can see what this is. So that is the part that we need, which is basically giving us see the date. So that's the text. And then if we basically just go in here and do index, instead of doing zero, see it gives us seven, which is that position. So now I'm going to save those in a variable here. And this way, we're going to be able to get to those two things that we actually care about outside of this first match. Now, if I change this to one, which is going to be the second match for sales rep, we should be able to see that this is going to return sales rep, and this returns the position for that. So I'm going to get back to the first one for now. So now basically the actual column name from our data is going to be the name of the column without those square brackets. So if we just get rid of that first square bracket and the end square bracket from this word, we should be able to get to the part that we need, which is the column name. Now to get to the actual name of the column, I'm going to take that word. So remember this word at this point is going to be this. So I want to get rid of this opening bracket, closing bracket, and I'm going to do it by using slice method on this text. And I'm going to do one to basically zero one starting from the second character. And I'm going to do negative one to remove the last character after that. So at this point, hopefully if I just console log the column name, See, it gives me the name of the column without the brackets. So I just get a date. And the last thing I'm going to cover here before I move back to here to the actual function, I'm going to talk about taking this text and replacing, let's say, this part out of this to something like column one or column three or column four, which is the syntax we get with that col1 from our regular function, right? To be able to do that, we would have to take that text, which is this variable here on top. And in that text, because this is going to be a string, let me actually get back to our console for a second. And let me just copy this and paste it in here so we have an example. So what we should be able to do, we should be able to take that text and we should be able to replace it here, we should be able to do the search value and the replace value. So let's say I'm trying to replace all of the sales in brackets with that column seven, right? So what I would do, I would basically search in regular expression as global right here for that sales column. 
And again, to make sure we skip the special characters, we're gonna do this. So if we do that, we should be able to search and find all those sales occurrences in that text. And now I'm gonna say, let's replace it with call seven, which is column seven text. So if I do that, hit enter, we should be able to see that, see that text was replaced with this column seven instead of having the sales in brackets in our text. Okay, so now that we know all of this, we basically want to use replace and here we're gonna basically do the regular expression we're searching for. And we're gonna do global to search to find all occurrences there. And we're gonna basically replace it with the column right here. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get back to this. And in this, what we'll do, this is gonna be the SQL string is gonna be basically this text. So first, let's just create a variable here and make it equal to this SQL string. So now I should be able to do this match all to get all of this possible columns from this particular thing. So I'm gonna basically repeat this. And then if I do this, that should get us all of the columns, which if you remember, it gives us the match that we're working with. And out of those matches, if we get to the first position, which is zero position, it's gonna give us the word basically that we're searching for. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get back to this and I don't want this to have all of that data. So right now this array of results, it has all of this data. It has the word, but it also has the index and all that other stuff. I don't want the rest. I just basically want a column list out of here. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna map through that array. And for each match, Out of that, I'm gonna only return that first part, which the zero out of that, if you remember, was just the word, which is gonna be this, then this, then this, then this. So at this point, what's gonna happen inside of this matches, we should have like an array of these columns. So it should look at this point like this. So basically it's a comma separated list of column names in square brackets. But one of the problems we're gonna have here is that we're gonna have the same column name, for example, in the statement repeating more than once. So I wanna clean that up and only have one instance of each one of these columns. And I'm gonna do that by creating a set. And we should be able to do that pretty quickly here by doing like unique matches variable here. And here I should be able to just use this construction to be able to get a unique list out of this. And what I'm doing here, I'm creating a new set using this array. And what's good about sets is that they will only allow you to have unique values in a set. So by doing this, it will automatically the set will remove all the duplicates. And then to convert it back to a regular array, I will just use this notation to get back to an array, which will be this unique matches. So at this point, this unique matches will be our column list without any duplicates. So instead of repeating sales twice, it will have it only once like this. So now what I want to do, I want to be able to search for this column called date in this list of columns and figure out which column that should be. Should it be column one, column two, column four, whichever column that might be. We're gonna search that in this headers range. And that headers range is basically gonna be an array of arrays. And to just convert it to a basic array without being array of arrays, I'm just gonna take that header range and just get the first row because it's basically like a single row here. So if we just get that row content, it should be the columns separated with commas. So at this point headers will be 
a comma separated list of columns from our data. So now within this headers, we should be able to do index of to search and find the column name we're trying to find. So for example, if we do unique matches zero, which is the first column out of that list, it should be able to find where is the position where that column is. The problem with this is that this unique matches zero is going to have this brackets around the column name, but here we don't have those brackets. So we need to get rid of front and back brackets when we're doing this, which is what I was doing here when I was doing the slice one negative one. So that's gonna be right in here. So if I do this, now it should be searching without brackets and in this headers, it will find position. So let's say it found it in position number one. So one thing you wanna remember is that when it says one, in this case, it's gonna mean two because the position starts from zero here. So if it finds a date, it's gonna say zero, but in our SQL language that we use here, we're gonna do column one. So it's always gonna be one off from what position it gives us. So if it gives us one, that's really two. If it gives us zero, that's really one. So now if this position exists, this is gonna find us something that's gonna be zero, one, two, three, basically anything is zero or higher. And if it doesn't find a match, it's gonna give us negative one. So we can do an if statement here and we can say if that position is not equal to negative one, then we know that we basically found a match. So if we are able to find a match, then what we wanna do, we wanna basically just do a substitution of the current column name with that column one, column two, column three, whatever that may be. And we're gonna do that using this replace thing. So I'm gonna copy this, go back in here and paste. So this will be this text, which will be our original text. So in this text, now we wanna find whatever column it is that we're trying to replace, and we're gonna replace it with that column number. Now, to find a column number, it's gonna be COL, and instead of this seven, we're basically just gonna put the column number that we need. So here, I'm just gonna concatenate that position, but I don't want the position, I want the position plus one, because of that offset of one column. So I'm gonna do this. Now the other problem here is this. So we cannot have this hard-coded sales. We need to basically use whatever that current column name is coming from here. Now because this is a regular expression right here, we can't just concatenate it in here. We have to somehow get this regular expression as a string instead of getting it as this regular expression syntax we do in JavaScript. And for that, there is this constructor where you can do new regexp around your regular expression. And then you can pass the regular expression as a string to this. So what I would do, I would remove this brackets and the G for global. And this actual regular expression would go in quotes like this. And then we would pass the global as G right in here as a second argument. So this will allow us now to use string in here. Now I just need to substitute this sales with the actual column name. Now to do that, I'm gonna replace this string notation with backticks. And I'm gonna take this sales and I'm gonna do dollar sign and curly brackets. And this will allow us, oops, dollar sign here. And this will allow us to just pass our variables in here. So I should be able to just do this right inside of this brackets. And that would be the name of the column we're trying to basically search and replace. And I should be able to do that same sort of thing here so that we don't have this weird syntax in two different places. So I'll just replace this with backticks and do like, call, so if this was seven, instead of seven, I'm gonna do dollar 
and brackets and right in the middle of those brackets, I'm going to do that position plus one. So this should allow us to search for the right column name in the string, find all of the occurrences and replace them with the column number. So call one, call two, call three, whatever that may be. Now, the only problem right now is that this is only going to do it for the first one because I did the first match, which is the match zero and match zero, but we really need this done for all of the matches. So what we're going to do, we're going to just put this in a loop. I'm just going to take those unique matches and I'm going to do a for each loop. And for each match, we're going to do a callback function. And basically all of this is going to go right inside of that loop. Just like this. Now we don't want to redeclare our variables in the loop. So I'm going to just move this declaration above the loop right in here. And then we'll just remove the let from here. Just like that. And then instead of this unique matches zero, we're just going to replace it with this variable match that we're creating in this loop. So this and this, I'm going to replace with that match. So it's going to just basically run through this and it's going to keep replacing this text with all those column positions. And then after we're done doing all of this, we'll try to return the final text, which will be the text after all of those replacements. So I'm going to save this. So let's try to go check this out and see what happened so far. So I'm going to go back here, open this, and this is loading. So I'm just going to take this my select function for now and try it by itself. Hit escape, open a new tab and paste it in here with an equal sign. Let's see what we get. That doesn't seem to produce the right results. So if this were to work, this should have been like column one, column four, column whatever, but that's not what I get right now. So I need to go back and figure out what's wrong with what we did. To figure out what's wrong with this, we're going to have to do a couple of console logs here. So I'm going to start by doing console log for unique matches. And then I'm going to do console log for each match. And then we'll do a console log for position. So let's see what this is giving us so far. So I'm going to try to go back and make sure that this reruns. And then I'm going to go back and open executions to see what happened there. So as you can see, I got this. That seems to be accurate, no problem. We got a unique list of columns. This gives us date, which is basically correct. That would be the first time it's a match. And then it found the position, it found it was zero, which is basically the first column. Then it found sales rep being position two, which is the third column. So one, two, three, that's correct. So it's finding column positions just fine. So that part is doing what it's supposed to do. So basically by the time we're here, we're all good. So something is happening over here when we're trying to do the replacement. So let's just remove this console logs that I did. So something is going on here when we replace it. So let's see what we did here. So this match in here is going to have the brackets in it too, because these are brackets we're adding, but this is also going to have those brackets coming from the match itself. So I think that's where we made a mistake. So let's just do the slicing on this match over here too and see what happens. So I'm going to save this, go back and try to refresh this thing. Didn't work. So we're going to have to see what's wrong here. So I'm going to console log this. Uh, 
And let's go check our executions again. That seems to be correct. We're getting the right column name. So let's try to move this to a variable. Should be a back tick in here and this regular expression text is what we're gonna pass to this regular expression. And let's try to console log that now to see what it looks like. So again, executions, open the latest one. It's not what I was expecting because this should have the escape characters. So I think escape characters are being escaped over here in our string. So let's double those escapes. So I'm gonna do another one here and another one over here. So let's test this and see what happens. So now we do have those escape characters. See one here, the other one is here. So that's good. So at this point, it seems like we got this part right. So it should be replacing this with a correct text. So what seems to be missing here is that we should probably be saving this in its own variable right in here. So after we do the replacement, it's probably not gonna replace the original text itself. So it's probably gonna produce a new result, which we should save in a variable. So we're gonna save it in the same variable here. So let's save this, go back and check this out. There it is. So here we go. We got that translated to our syntax now. Column one, column three, column seven, column seven, finally. Now let's go and check our summary. Look at that. So this is our function, see? This is the way we wrote our function and it is producing the right results in the right place. Now let's go and add some columns to our original data. Something like this. Let's go back and check the summary again. So far so good. Let's just make sure this is definitely updating by changing this to a different number. And as you can see, it still works just fine. So we're able to add or remove columns and this still works. Let's also make sure we add a couple of columns in front like this and check this and make sure this operates the way it should. Yes, it does. So as you can see, our function is now able to just go grab the headers and basically replace them with the appropriate header name. So the only one I'm concerned about because it has a special character in there is this column. Let's just test that one too, this customer store and make sure it works. So I'm gonna copy that, go back to this and add it as one of the columns in brackets again. And we're fine. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.